It is a dark day, friends. This stream starts the darkest of the days. Although, to be mostly honest, I think Evan was probably the darkest day, but alas, today we play the magiest mage of all mages. A classic explorer mage. No special name, no special backstory. It's just a mage. And I need three of them. All right, there's an awful lot of options. Did I think of a name to name the magiest mage of all mages? I did not. What do we name this mage? It's always something missed. Mage miss. <laughs> No. Three tiresome mists. I don't think tiresome would fit. Calming mist? Hold on, I kind of like that. Calming mist. Can I use this name? Is it too long? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There must be something that it considers a curse word in it. Holy mist. Is that really not taken? Oh my gosh, it's not taken. <laughs> there we go, holy mist. That's actually, that actually rolls off the tongue quite nicely. Like, that's a name that I would be okay maining. Ah, yes. And this is how all explorers start. They all start under this maple tree, wondering who that girl is and why she's running away. And that looks good. Okay. So I don't have link skills just yet. I think I get Legion? No, I don't get Legion yet. So I'm gonna blast through this because I could talk about like all of the interesting stuff regarding the start of an explorer character. But I want you to just take notice of how many times I've done this. You're gonna see some very small optimizations. Starting with jumping down ramps for more momentum. And then I grab the mouse because I know that I know that I know that, ah, oh, delete character. But I want you to just take notice of how many times I've done this. You're gonna see some very small optimizations. I'm pretty sure she has two options to say and I think I chose the long one. Yeah, I did. You know, I was gonna do this the most optimized way and then I just immediately made the first mistake of becoming Maya's friend. She, she has two options of, uh, do you want to be friends or do you want to not be friends? And the not be friends option skips tutorial and I accidentally chose to be her friend. So I guess I will show off how fast I do this on the next bishop I make because I have to make three of these. Speedrun's absolutely not world record pace. You know, I've actually never done this tutorial. What even is this? A gift for completing this? Huh. Potions. I have a strange feeling I'm gonna need these because I'm playing a mage. Yo! I have never seen these equips. <laughs> Shows what I know, right? Okay, but this is where stuff gets familiar. Alright, now that I'm level 6, I can max out nimble feet and attempt to throw this on shift. And it's going to look faster the next time around, I guess. Funny room. Has a little teleporter to move slightly farther forward. And then this is the room where I use nimble feet. <laughs> it makes it go faster for 10 seconds because this is the only room big enough to actually use all of nimble feet. And then I swap to holding this with my other hand so that I free my mouse hand. So that I can hold space right about here. 
and talk to this guy and talk to sugar and then run back because they asked me to open a crate in the last map and it does not matter which one you grab your crates have a 100% chance of dropping the boarding tickets and then nimble feet comes up just in time again get slightly closer this time and then you need to kill a very big snail biggest snailess Wap, wap. I'm pretty sure it's intended to be harder for like your first character, but I have a lot of legion. Wait, 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 I do want to showcase this though. Okay, so as an explorer, when you get on this boat and you talk to this guy, this guy says, I don't care, you totally look like Cal. Hey Cal, what are you doing here? Hello, it's me. Buddy, it's been a long time. This guy knows somebody named Cow that totally looks like your character, regardless of how you make your character. And this will be important later. It'll be important later, so much later, that it will not be on this character. It will be a completely different character that I make later, where this will be important. Trust me. But Cow, really, what brings you here? I haven't. You haven't changed a bit. Listen, you've got the wrong person. Very funny, Cal, but don't mess with me. Are you really not Cal? I truly am not. Why, like, the other person's name is Cal? I don't know. I assume that probably means something in Korean, or maybe it's supposed to, but in English, all we think of is the white and black spotted milk animal. Okay, so when talking to this girl, be careful because she will quickly present five options, and if you accidentally click the wrong one, you have to undo it. And it won't let you undo it until, like, some dialogue goes through. So, uh, be very careful. What are they like? Warriors. Bowmen. Finally, pirates. Now you choose. Yeah, you'd think that she'd go through all five, but no, she says warriors, then bowmen. Finally, pirates. And if you click spacebar again, it auto picks warrior because it's the top option. And it takes a, a minute to undo that. So, magician, intellectual, and magical. And now, are you ready for one of my favorite cutscenes in all of Maple? You would never expect it to be for the explorers, but. Ah, uh, you should recognize it immediately upon hearing this song. There's a feeling deep inside, let it be your prayer. Show me the power you can hide. When your fires all die out, all you know just turns to ash. And your life goes slipping, spinning into doubt. Sunshine trapped inside your heart Cold and lost and in the dark Looking back on all this Nobody was there Nothing left to lose Gotta find the you That's hidden deep deep down And like the fire in yourself Never be afraid to fall Throw yourself into it Victory is waiting for you Go fight, show your don't slow down, no time to waste Nothing's stopping you now It's gonna be your day Hopes and wishes never fade Why do you make them stronger? Nothing will take them from you Go fight, show your energy There's a feeling deep inside Let it be your prayer Show me the power you can have about to cast the most insane jutsu of all time. You better believe it. 
You better believe my ability to dance with my fingers and swing my arms. I have the stamina to just keep going. I don't know why that's one of the only things I do have for that, but like, if you catch me running outside, I don't run very far. <laughs> so, here we go. As soon as we land, because I clicked magician, uh, the magician job instructor talks to me and just, bam, here we are. See, if I had held spacebar to the warrior place, I'd be in the warrior place right now. Immediately. Legion. We need intelligence and magic attack. So now we have the return scrolls and also explorers get this strange explorer book. And there's going to be like a thing above my head in a second here. There. And then it shows this maple leaf. And that's it. You get this stuff, but honestly, I just throw it on the ground. I do not need this stuff. Oh yeah, also we got link skills. Also, I'm gonna take three snails, just cause I can. And we're gonna take Fury Unleashed, Phantom Instinct, Keen Edge, Elementalism, Skip Over, Light Wash, Wild Rage, Cygnus Blessing, Judgments, Tides of Battle, Rune Persistence, Combo Kill Blessing, Solace, and Elven Blessing. So, I did not take Angelic Buster's Link. And that is because it's for bursting bosses. You know what? I'm actually going to try this. I think it would be slightly better than Demon Slayer's boss damage. So I'm going to unlink that and link this instead. Yeah. Six. Million. Haven't played in years. I'm like, please, someone get me back into it. Yeah, that's what the series is geared toward. Helping old players get back into the game and new players learn how to start in the game. Oh, not this again. No. <laughs> I should have dealt with that at the end of the Angelic Buster video and I didn't think about it. I'll deal with it during an MVP around level 60-ish. That's when I'll deal with it. Okay, but first job skills. Rest in peace, Magic Claw. Magicians used to have a skill called Magic Claw and they don't anymore. Now have Energy Bolt, or as I like to call it, Magic Bubble. Put this here, and honestly, I'm just gonna max teleport because the cost goes down the more points I put into it. And then, no, no, we're gonna go to golems. Please stop lagging. We're gonna go to golems. Rest in peace, dragon roar and spear crusher. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I sure remember. Loved spear crusher. Look at this. It's time to be a mage. Look at this. I cannot jump and cast. It's just... Esh. 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 So, let me tell you that long ago, when you made a mage, just an ordinary explorer mage, you did not get teleport at first job. Teleport was a second job ability. Uh, yeah, sure, we can have help. As, uh... I guess I should talk about that. Because, uh, I think it was on the Luminous video, I saw a comment that caught my attention that was something like, is it just me or is it less fun to watch when she's getting, like, a whole squad's worth of help? And I stared at it for, like, several nights because I was like, I don't want it to seem like I'm always getting an extremely large amount of help because I do want this to be, like, practical in the sense that I want everyone to be able to do what I'm doing but also I don't know I do have fun with the squad I have fun with friends and like I don't ask them to come and help me because I'm too lazy or anything to do the stuff myself they come because they enjoy it 
and I'm very much capable of doing all this stuff on my own, but what I'm getting at is that I do think MMOs are more fun with more friends. So I encourage party play. To be fair, you're receiving buffs that help so minimally on a low level. So minimally if they're following pretty much your exact link legion guide, they still have your strength. Maybe literally just slower than your pace, but they still could do it. Yeah, exactly. The buffs speed up the pace, which is helpful because I can only play for six hours a week. Cause like, if you think about it, being able to play an MMO for six hours a week is a little small, but like, it's all I can manage. Which should also, like, hearing me say that out loud, I only play an MMO for six hours a week to all those out there who have more than six hours a week to play an MMO. That should sound great to you, cause uh, it means you should be able to accomplish more than me. And I think the comment that really, the take on it that really helped me decide whether I wanted to keep having the squad help me or not was my friend Rose saying that she enjoyed the chaos factor of having the extra people there because you never quite know which ones will be there on what days and for how long and also just like having people around it livens the place up and I'm on a max MP boost I said max there Max MP plus 20% and increases MP by 120 per level. My MP increased from like 900 to 4000. Excellent. Then I can max these two skills. And then hopefully not forget about Magic Guard later and end up dying. Rest in peace, Evan. Took that one death because I forgot Magic Guard. I think Evan holds the most deaths I've had on a character so far. Evan died like three times. Doesn't matter how much experience you have in the game, sometimes the mistakes just happen. And sometimes the mistakes just keep coming. What is this circle thing? Yeah, it's my eye tracker. It tracks the golems. Yeah, it tracks my targets. Target detected. Target locked. Sorry to keep you waiting. Target locked. Fire. Rudy, your turn and other funny Xenon quotes. Also, you might notice I have this light bulb above my head. I do not trust it in the slightest. I recall the light bulb is slightly different for each explorer, and I think one or two of them is an auto teleport somewhere, and I don't know if it's mage, so I'm not clicking on it. Because if I auto teleport out of here, it will drop my combo kill. Auto TP to six path crossway, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't do it for every class. It's weird in that way. I feel like this is taking longer than usual. It might just be because like regular mage is not too big on hitboxes or agility. Here, I got you. Oh, and you have meditates. Increases the magic attack of the party. Probably literally took that from a bishop. <laughs> It's gonna be me. I'm gonna have to meditate in the holy symbol. Bounty hunter portal. My gosh. You know, I'm pretty sure this magic bubble used to only hit one target. A little magician not too good at this. And coming back out of the polo portal, it preserves the combo kill count that I had. So it's still at 645. <laughs> Can't miss holy symbol when it's my own holy symbol. Exactly. Also, I think Bishop's holy symbol is slightly better than Phantom's holy symbol. I don't quite remember like the wording on Phantom's impeccable memory, but I think it does things like lower than the original. Stolen skills are slightly worse than the originals. And there we go, level 30. Now let's follow this. What to do now? Eat. What to do now? Level up. <laughs> Look for other missions. Press yes to teleport. And then I'm just gonna... 
Right. I'm currently in a place that's technically not on the world map. Yondo. The hat fell down somewhere. Oh my gosh. Looking for a hat. There's this hat. I don't remember which hat you had on. Okay, can I leave now? Aha! I've escaped. I've escaped the clutches. <laughs> Three arcane paths. Yeah, because regular explorers... They get to choose three paths. Well, most of them get three. Actually, all of them get three? Yeah, all of them get three now. Except, like, if you want to make a dual blade thief, I'm pretty sure you have to decide that in the character select screen. Because if you just, like, go to the thief instructor, it's like, do you want to be a knight lord or a shadower? So, like, you have to decide being a dual blade beforehand. But dual blade is technically an explorer thief. But, like, for the mages... It asks, do you want to choose the path of cleric, path of ice lightning, or path of fire poison? And I'm here for a cleric. Which, on my chart, it's like, do you want to be a supportive mage? And if you say yes, it's like, do you want to be able to support yourself or just your friends? And if you say, like, just my friends, it's bishop. It's like, I always have friends by my side. Wholesome. Because, uh, bishops don't especially do too well on their own, but bishops are very much loved in party play. So, like, if you have friends that you can play with all the time, pick bishop. Like, if you are, like, the supportive friends, you love healing your friends and making sure that they go far... Bishop is a good class. It pains me that Bishop has one of the lowest play rates of like any class. It's not the lowest. I'm pretty sure the lowest is Jet, but Bishop could be so much more. I wish there were more people playing Bishop. They're so rare. All right. Now we get Holy Arrow. And we get Heal. And Blessed Ensemble. This is a skill that not many people know about. Increase your damage in proportion to the number of nearby party members that you have buffed. Including yourself, increase your final damage by 2% in proportion to the number of nearby party members that you have buffed. 20% bonus EXP for each cleric in the party. If you have a whole party of bishops, they gain more EXP together. <laughs> it actually says that just right there. 20% bonus EXP for each cleric in the party. No one ever talks about this. Like, it's so cool. It just... Oh my gosh. I want bless, but it says I need five points in invincible. And invincible says I need five points in heal. Oh, but what I really want is MP eater, which needs five points in spell mastery. Yeah, so I want to probably max spell mastery as fast as possible. So, Savage Terminal. Savage Terminal at the Hotta Dogs. Hotta Dogs. Both of these skills only do one line. Okay, Holy Arrow is half the mana cost, slightly stronger, and hits the same amount of targets. But the hitbox is slightly different. Since the hitbox. The hitbox doesn't care if two targets are like spread really wide apart. Whereas the energy bubble kind of needs something to explode on. Similar to star bubble. Also, I'm noticing the range of this is... Long? No, something's not right about this hitbox. You guys are seeing that, right? I think it has an explosive hitbox just like star bubble. It's really hard to tell what the hitbox of this skill is. Very unclear. Cause like, see how it's not hitting that dog over there? It's not hitting the far dog until some of the closer ones die. Would Kerning Junior Race be better? Um, it might be, I'm not sure.
It is really hard for me to tell what the hitbox of this skill is. 500 reward points? Don't let me forget about those. We're not gonna forget about them after the stream, are we? <laughs> Heal spam gameplay. Are these undead? They are not. Oh, that's right. Rates count as undead, don't they? What level are junior rates? Not the bishop? Yes, the bishop. And it's not just the bishop. It's worse. It's a bishop. <laughs> Never thought moving from B to A could be worse, but this is the context. Max spell mastery and start putting points into MP eater. Because this is just mana steel. Isn't that wonderful? A class that just... It regens mana when it attacks. Oh my gosh, my cosplay is going to look fantastic for when we do the, the looty PQ. You better believe that I'm going to keep a set of level like 35-ish gear just for doing the, the looty PQ. Set of level 40. I'm not sure if we're going to do that today. By the second bishop? <laughs> Definitely. Did they move magic fairy to passive? What is magic fairy? Magic Guard is a toggle. I just have it turned off right now because turning on Magic Guard would make me lose MP faster and I don't like losing MP. The hitbox on this skill is so weird. Dislike. Okay, let's max high wisdom. This is why I like Ice Lightning better. Nonsense, nonsense. I get my own holy symbol. Think of the implications of my own holy symbol. It's great. Also, I am now noticing that I do not get meditate. I guess meditate is for ice lightning and fire poison. That's the the leaf buff that gives some flat magic attack. My little holy arrow. You know, way back when holy arrow used to actually look like an arrow. It used to look like pulling a bow back and shooting it and I'm almost positive it only hit one target. Long ago, being able to hit multiple targets was very much like a special thing. Mages could only hit one target. Uh, Ice Lightning had the, the lightning skill that could select I think up to six targets. So that was unique. Warriors could slash blast six targets from first job which is great and then i believe bowman got arrow bomb i could hit multiple targets whereas crossbowman did not uh but you gotta love poor assassin did not get any sort of multi-target skill until uh third job it had to be level 70 but then the skill that they got was iconic got such an iconic skill that people still remember the skill to this day. At level 70, Throwing Star Thieves got the skill called Avenger. To describe it, imagine a really big shuriken that like takes a second to unfold in your hand before you throw it. But it just goes and then throw it. It was iconic. You notice just now? And you move away from holy symbol, it goes to grayscale? Yeah. I noticed that like several weeks ago, but I haven't really bothered to do anything about it. But it's one of the reasons why I'm excited to use my own holy symbol. <laughs> bless! There, now I bless you! And just like that, with blessed ensemble, I gained more damage because I buffed you. Isn't that great? I remember I had this friend in college who used to like make fun of my sneezes. It was like I would sneeze and then he would get embarrassed and be like, please stop sneezing. Like, please stop sneezing around me. It's like, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> and he's just like, can you change the way you sneeze so it doesn't look so anime? I'm like, Okay, just for you. And then I started developing this strange new way of sneezing. Like if I sneeze in public, the way I sneeze is like, I 
I'll be standing up. Hold on, let me get on a rope so I don't die. But I'd be standing up and I'll sneeze and go Tss. like I just drop my face to the floor so that I sneeze like on the ground and like put my hand down and my other arm like up. So it's like some sort of like summoning power, some summoning ability. <laughs> New sneeze method. You got it. That's practically what I did, except I just thought like, what is the most anime way to sneeze possible? And just push. Also, I think we can move to the cronies, especially since I just found this glove. Has its mean cronies. They sure are mean. Look at them with their mohawks. Oh, look at that. Do you see that little book that appeared above one's head? That right there is the mage link skill and the reason why I'm making this character. I guess I never talked about that. It's called empirical knowledge. When attacking, there's a 15% chance to leave a debuff on the highest HP target among those struck, which is going to be a boss if you're bossing or just generally any attack if you're attacking stuff, but anyway, it grants you a bonus against them, which is just damage and defense ignore per stack. Now, this one says master level 6, so uh, when I get this character level 120 and it's stopping at 120, it'll only be master level 2. That's why I need another 2 to add to it and another 2 to add to it for a total of six. That's why I need three explorer mages because uh, the skill is not very good until it gets maxed. And even when it's maxed, it's a little lackluster, which is why I'm making it so late. Yeah, for most characters that I would main, explorer thief link would be a good pairing with this. However, this is a rare case where uh, I'm using some other links and I just don't have the space for it. It was kind of a choice between Mage Link and Thief Link and Mage Link was slightly better for Adele because Adele does not have any way to apply debuffs to her targets. Well, not like consistently because like my Mercedes did not need the Mage Link because Mercedes can just apply debuffs to everything just using Unicorn and Spikes Royale, so I took Thief Link instead because it's like 9% damage. Gosh, Bishop hitboxes are just so small. At least it gets like progressively easier with each job advance. Ice, ice, ice. What? Did that one mob just drop two overalls? I didn't know they could do that. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly a returning player. As I've been active somewhat regularly throughout most of like, uh, is it almost 13 years now? The trick is that I've been creating a fresh new account for the sake of a series that I've been wanting to make. I guess it is a fairly new idea for a series, but yeah, I thought it'd be pretty cool if I just restarted an entire account from zero and so far it's been so great it's been like one of the greatest things in my life so far because one of the things that i like about maple story is that it's kind of with the idea that like all motion is good motion because like if you're playing league of legends ranked or anything with a ranked ladder really if you're not having a good day and you're losing a lot, you move down the ladder. That is negative motion. You spent time on the game and lost progress. That never happens in Maple Story. In Maple Story, just about anything you do in the game will get you EXP, money, some sort of gear you need. Like, I guess you could make arguments about like, what if you're cubing something and the potential gets worse, but like that's so short term in the grand scheme of things. If you boom your equips, 
yeah, there's that. But like, for the most part, generally everything you do is positive motion. Any motion is good motion. And I feel like that's one of the things that really keeps me coming back to Maple. I don't know, it's just so easy to progress. The game has a very natural and easy progression. And it really keeps going. It's the gift that keeps giving. Because like, in most friend groups, like if you have a friend group of people playing Maple Story, it's very doubtful that any one of them will be level 275. There's Ty over here with an 8k legion, but like, his main isn't level 275. And then, what if there's somebody who does have a level 275 character, but their legion sucks? Like, Zerhu. <laughs> That's right, I said it. I'm not sure if I asked you, but you ever think about applying to Bean Brigade? I've never heard of that. Could stay here a little longer or we could go to Boars. I kind of just move maps when I feel like it. There isn't really a lot of rhyme or reason to when I move maps. Because like this boar map, I just happen to know that it's oddly dense, which just has a lot of mobs on it. It's fairly large for most maps, but just the amount of mobs on it. Oh, we didn't see an example of holy elm. Oh my gosh, we're going to rates right now. Hold up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look at that cooldown. Heals cooldown per party member minus two seconds. Yeah, so when using heal near undead monsters, it damages undead monsters. However, there was a point at which Bishop was given a cooldown on heal, which is really unfortunate. However, if, for whatever reason, I have two party members that are standing right on top of each other, yeah, if they're both in the same spot and I heal, I think it's supposed to remove the cooldown. It is not doing that. Is that because... Is that because it has to actually, like, heal damaged party members? Oh... They have to have damage on them, see? Bishop got quite some nerfs to healing abilities, and it's really sad because healing is supposed to be their main thing, but uh, yeah, heal's not really meant to be spammed. It's a little sad, but yeah, uh, for those who didn't know, there actually is elemental type advantage in this game. I think I mentioned it during the Evan video, there is actually elemental type advantage, and uh, holy magic, as you might expect, is like extra effective against undead. So I do an abnormal amount of damage to these guys, but uh, I don't know if this training ground is like actually good for training in. Heal spam does not exactly spam, sadly. Thankfully, explorer mages can jump and teleport, just like Kana. Why not try scout dogs? Oh, that's a good idea. What level are scout dogs? Oh, they're a little high level. But it's okay because I'm I'm just about to level up. Let's see, it should be inside here. There we go. Oh, it's painful. Oh, and one of the big reasons why I dislike characters that are unable to cast their abilities in the air is that when they get knocked around, you are technically airborne for like just a short little moment and uh, you cannot cast abilities while you are airborne because mages just can't. If you're like a thief or a warrior, you can totally cast stuff while you're being knocked back. Except warriors have power stands and they don't get knocked back because warriors are cool. Mages just tend to be so good for Lynx and Legion. And Beast Tamer isn't even available to be made right now. Unless it is. Is Beast Tamer available? Because if Beast Tamer is available, I have to make that. <laughs> it will be at Neo. Oh dear. Beast Tamer and Zero. Oh my gosh. Do I want to make another Zero? I should make a Zero. Zero is a lot of EXP. It's an EXP Legion. It's like 8% EXP Legion, I think. Might even be 10% at level 200. 
And if you're getting it to, what is it, level 185 before I can get out, you might as well just finish the home stretch to 200. I cannot use the rune. You buff me. I buff you. I'm gonna buff Ty too. Give me that ensemble damage. I can't ignore it anymore. Why is the mic so huge? It's just... It's a standing mic. I don't know, they just come that big. But like, there's a fairly large distance between me and the mic. Bite into it like ice cream. Hum. No. Curses. I'm not third job yet, I can't dispel this. Ready? I heal in front of it, and then terms and conditions. Look at the damage output. Look at the, the three books above its head. It's tremendous. It's mage. Where is Luminous? I'll take Luminous. <laughs> is that the third stage of grief? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm not level 60 yet. It is a dark day. Almost two hours into this stream and I'm not level 60. Does Kyrie know what a Keyblade is? I certainly do. You think I could make it through high school and college without learning what a Keyblade is? Actually, I think I learned about what a Keyblade was in like middle school. Steals energy bubble? Do it! Use it! There it is! The energy bubble! Pew pew pew! Magic bubble! <laughs> Then while I'm here, I can start applying level 60 gear. I haven't found any shields yet. I always forget that mages can even use shields. Okay, so... Job advance time. Let me tell you how stressful job advances used to be back in the day. The day being, uh... I wonder when they changed it. I don't know when they changed it. Probably sometime around like 2012, 2012, 2013, but uh, you used to come here, which is Alnath, by the way, if you walk outside. You used to have to take an airship over here to Orvis, descend this tower. This is assuming you don't have a hyper teleport rock, because back then there was no Pantheon portal or any sort of way to just auto teleport. You had to come down this tower. And uh, these mobs were not level 70 back then, they were level 30-ish. And you'd come out to Elnath, and you would come here at level 70 to get your third job advance. Yes, it used to be 70. And you would talk to your respective instructor here, and the instructor would say, Okay, you must go take the test of strength. It was not here. I believe it was done in Sleepywood. It might have been here. But uh, either way, you eventually end up here in this map for the test of strength. And it was one out of two tests. And here you find your job instructor, which is like kind of cool. Please, Grendel. Okay, there. And we get this, which is a black charm or proof of completion or something like that. And we don't bother the yetis because uh, the yetis are level 117 and they will one-shot me. And we go back here and then we would go through the other test. But see, here, test of strength, all done. Your third job now. But back in the day, right after the test of strength, there was the test of wisdom. You'd have to walk out to that map that I was just in that, that map with the big black crystal and you would not be allowed to talk to the crystal unless you had a dark crystal to offer to the statue. And how you obtain a dark crystal? I don't know. I never learned how. These days you craft one in the crafting menu. I'm not currently a, a miner so I can't do that but I don't have any mining level. But you used to have to obtain a dark crystal. Now, I don't know how to obtain a dark crystal back then, but I knew that people sold them for about 4 million mesos. Which, if you've seen my meso acquisition rate, it's much higher in like this server in this day and age, but back then, no, it was not so good. I could not really muster up 1 million mesos without help from other people. So, 
four million mesos took my heart and soul to get one dark crystal and you come up to this this uh black statue crystal thing that was there and you say that you want to start the test of knowledge and then it starts asking you some multiple choice questions and uh the multiple choice questions are like the npc jm from the streets where is he located it asks questions like that and i just remember like whenever I would have to do the third job, because I guess I did it a few times, but I would get this dark crystal. I would offer it to the statue and just have my Google open on the side and just copy and paste the question into Google, get the answer and then click it. Because I did not dare to get any of those questions wrong. It didn't matter if I'm just like, yeah, I know that guy's from Kerning City. Like, but is he really from Kerning City? Because like... <laughs> It took my heart and soul to muster up four million muscles to buy a dark crystal, and I did not want to be wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. Time to go to Drake's. <laughs> Actually, before I go to Drake's, I want to talk a little about some of the skills that I've just obtained. Okay, so Shining Ray is actually pretty good. So we have Holy Arrow that does 518% damage one line. Shining Ray does 160% four lines. Okay, it's slightly more. So yeah, it does more damage, more targets. And it has quite a nice hitbox. So this just outright replaces that. And it looks cool. We also have Dispel for if you get an abnormal status on you or on any of your party, you just Dispel. No cooldown. Press the Dispel button. Just take all the bad status is off people. Mystic door used to be great, but it, you can kind of forget about it now. And the grand holy symbol. I want to max it first, but also like Mox has holy symbol, so I won't be doing that. Teleport mastery makes your teleport do damage. Honestly, it's underwhelming in my opinion. Holy magic shell is great for uh, party play during bosses. It shields your party for like 10 seconds. And then we have extra damage and extra damage. So, I think I'm going to just put one point into Arcane Overdrive and then two points into Holy Focus and work on that immediately. And look at the crit rate go up. Crit rate. Channel 1 Drakes is not open. Wait. Yes, it is. The Bees with Guns ad friend. Good morning, Frost. So. Can we go with the Shining Ray? Look at that damage! And the attack speed, too! Still can't cast it in the air, but like... It's good damage, good attack speed, good hitbox, solid ability. Actually, I wonder if I should be going up instead, because I can jump up and teleport upward. Yeah, I think Bishop is uniquely going to be good at jumping upward, because uh, jumping down requires that something is not immediately attacking me. Whereas jumping up, I can do it a lot more freely. Also, now that I'm level 60, I can fix this Legion coin thing. Alright, hold up. Let me just assign units. Let me quickly just pull off Ilion. And put on small, small priest. And then start raid. Poke at the dragon a little and retreat. And you collected 200 coins. Now I manage the legion. Sign units. Take the priest off. And who was it? Alien. Not that that matters a whole lot, but sure. It's back on there. Also, we can max holy focus now. Oh, the big paladin flex. It's the biggest flex in the game. I love the Paladin Flex. It's just 30 seconds of invincibility. I think that's the level 140 hyperskill. Gosh, I sure wish that I could jump and attack. Cause like, I just barely can't hit that top row up there. Because the attack starts on the ground, it doesn't do me any good. <laughs> Mox stole the flex move? It's okay, you're still way tankier than he is. Probably. 
Unless Mox has Freud's wisdom. Oh, I'm being blessed with divine echo. Spawn hammers at him here or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a cool skill. It makes the paladin's attacks appear out of me. Max arcane overdrive. And then I think I max holy symbol, which requires three points in dispel. There's the big flex. Now I'm invincible. That's right, you can't debilitate me anymore. The bishop's early game damage, quite low. Bishop's late game damage is like solid okay, I would say. It's not as bad as you would expect it to be based on early game damage. Yeah, I think third job is when things like start looking nicer for Bishop. And at fourth job, you get a nicer hitbox skill, which is Big Bang. And you also get the skill that is the pinnacle of magehood, known as Genesis. You'll see it when I get there. <laughs> Oh, I hear an Adele. That big whoosh sound. That was an Adele. That'll be me someday, in like a month. None shall disturb my slumber in the elixir. Can they not even hit you? Guard, guard, guard. Like surely something will just hit you with a one. Right? And then it will knock you off the chair? Is this really just an RNG victory? You don't have a hundred percent guard chance, do you? Like maybe it's ninety or ninety-five. It's ninety-nine percent. Also, hiya, Max Holy Symbol. Are you going to start a guild? I'm not sure if I want to start a guild. I'm not sure I really have the time to like run a guild. Do I call you Misty or Kyrie? Probably Kyrie. I feel like that's easier. Originally, my name tag for everything was Ethereal Mist, but I somehow lost that Twitch account. So when I tried to make another Twitch account, I named it Dreamy Mist because that's essentially the same thing as Ethereal. Um, Cloud Park is probably not a good idea because just like Luminous, I don't really have a good way of uh, scaling really tall, like really widely spaced platforms vertically. Strangely reminds me of how most of my training for my Mercedes happened in Moras True Fay 4, which is a map that just about nobody trained on. But I know I can't say that nobody ever trained on it because otherwise I'd find 100% burning channels on every channel and I didn't. But I did find like some 70% sometimes. So like the amount of people that trained there was very small. And I loved my secret secluded training map. As gosh, if you could have seen the way that I trained there.
You know, White Fangs might actually be pretty good now that you mention it. Because if Ty takes care of the top layer, then I can just sit between the bottom two. Yeah, that would work pretty well. Yeah, let's go White Fangs. Let's see. Ice Valley 2. Time to slide on the ice. Goodbye. Basically skip White Fangs most of the time. Yeah, generally speaking, White Fangs is like a not as good Drake's map because it's like a Drake's map but with only three layers instead of four. But since I can't clear all the three layers efficiently, it's slightly better for me to have less because it just means I don't have to move as much. Cape Cool. Cape Cool. Also, Veteran Adventure. I could actually max teleport mastery because it gives me more distance. If you see how currently from here I cannot teleport downward, but then if I turn on teleport mastery, uh, now I can. Yeah. See, using the skill points is all about what you need to train the fastest. And while I do technically need damage right now, I also very greatly need that ability to move between platforms faster. I guess other than that, I would just need points into Shining Ray, because I don't think any of these other skills give me damage. Shining Ray, 254% damage four times. Who decided these numbers? Who is just like, yeah, 254%. Also, I have not found a new weapon at all. Where are the weapons? There have been no, no wands and no staffs ever since Savage Terminal. Small flex on Big Bishop. <laughs> Wait, I can dispel this. Look at that! Bishop! <laughs> you see that? This mob tried to put me in a state of eternal darkness, and I just dispelled it right off. Just cleansed. Huh? I have come for the pog at last. Where's my pog emo? So, I think we will start in the Desert of Serenity. Let's put a point into some of these other skills. Just for funsies. So, in theory, I'm expecting Divine Protection to be a buff that I turn on once and it stays on until something attempts to hit me with a CC. Correct! I didn't expect it to be visible. It is, uh, very, very visible. <laughs> and I appear to be taking a lot of damage. But, thankfully, I'm playing Bishop. So, when I take damage, I just press my heal button. Because that's, like, the main selling point of Bishop. Is that it's, like, the only dedicated healer class in the game. And back then, they thought they might need healers in this game. And, uh... Modern day Maple just doesn't really need healers. <laughs> People don't even really think about how valuable having a healer would be in like late game boss raiding content until you get a party with a bishop in it. Things get so much simpler with a bishop in your party. Like, you never think about how many nice things they do for you until you see it. I feel cold. Shh, my child, do not worry. You'll have the lights warmth soon replied the priest. <laughs> also, this is the funniest thing about playing Bishop. Look at my crit rate. It's 90% and the number is black. It's really high for some reason. Like, you'd think crit rate would be like Bowmaster, Nightlord, Thieves, and Archers. But no, the highest crit rate explorer is uh, Bishop. If someone would like to try to prove me wrong, maybe Shadower? I think Shadow Warrior is technically higher because they get a skill called Coin Flip or something. That like, I think it raises their crit rate by 50% or something. Or maybe it just raises it all the way up to 100. I don't know, bishops just have really high crit rate for some reason. A daily gift for mastery books. How wonderful. Poor bishop is just not all that interesting. Although that's just my bias against mages. I have more two times cards. See, that's one of the great things about only playing twice a week is that every time I log on, the game gives me rest EXP coupons. 
I think it gives you a handful of them if you have not logged on in the last 24 hours. It's efficient for my living situation, I guess. Although I think it'd technically be better for your account if you just did log on every day. Especially since there's like daily content to do after level 200. But since I don't have access to daily content because I'm lower than level 200, I don't really have to worry about anything. I can just reap the benefits. I'm actually a little curious when main time rolls are on. You said you'll show things like 1 to 200 journey and all the things new players have to know and all that. But what'll happen to your playtime in general? Will you do more off stream things in your free time? I think I will. I've been thinking about that and I think for the most part like I'll make an effort to like do some dailies every day of the week but then like on stream days I'll do dailies like plus more stuff after that. So I won't really be doing any grinding on off stream days but uh my arcane symbols would surely suffer if I did not also work on them the other five days of the week and also it's a little hard to farm most events only playing two days a week so yeah i think i will i'll do like off stream dailies when i have a level 200 main i was kind of wondering how you describe your general playtime when you're off work and have some time to spare oh you're wondering like what sort of things i do outside of work and outside of streams most of my time that is not working and not streaming is video editing and if it's not video editing it is either sleeping or taking a walk dare you challenge the holy light the holy light is not that scary on a scale of one to luminous we are about bishop and then i came to the conclusion i was like okay so, try to argue with me here. The tankiest character in the game is Phantom. Because Phantom is a maple legend who can use the fifth job skill Freud's Wisdom to be invincible for 30 seconds. And as soon as that ends, they use the stolen skill from Paladin to flex and be invincible for another 30 seconds. <laughs> thereby making them invincible for a total of 60 seconds. And that's not including other iframes that they can steal. They also have self-door, yes. Which, door is a very strange term that's... It's something like, I only hear it with like the more veteran players of the game. You just say like, the class has a door and everyone's just like, yeah, 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 they've got a door. Door is actually a bishop skill, funny enough. And it's not, it is not mystic door. This door right here, it's not that door. <laughs> At level 160, Bishop gets a hyper skill called Heaven's Door, and upon skill activation, this giant door appears on the map, but the important part is that it gives your party a buff called Heaven's Door buff, and it makes it so if a party member dies, they don't. One time on death, don't. And this works for each individual party member, so... Any class that has this sort of mechanic, like Phantom, who has a skill called Final Faint, I think, people just say, it's a door. Oh, level 100. Fourth job? I'm impressed. You have a skill for the arcane. My way to get stronger is to take your fourth job advancement. See, I love how, like, let me just really quickly go to... Elenia. So for your first and second job advancements, you report to this guy, Grendel the Really Old. What? And then for your third job advancement, you report to these guys in Alnath, who are just like other instructors, I guess. But then for your fourth job, there's another set of instructors. And this job instructor is just like, go defeat a Griffy and a Manon. Back in the day, there used to be, like, people would, like, line up to get their fourth job advancements because, uh, 
you had to wait for Griffey and Manon to respawn anytime somebody wanted their fourth job transfer. <laughs> but you leave through here, and then there's these really strong mobs, and you just teleport over here to the other side of the forest, and go on this stump, and then here's the other one. Oh, nice. Hey, one, one, eh? Uh, I did it again. So you're being really mean. I need an MP fountain is what I need. Uh, mages are so hard. Okay, let's turn on the holy magic shell. And the terms and conditions and just DPS this boss. And just kill him before he can hit back. Because clearly I'm not good enough at mages to be able to win without cheesing it like that. <laughs> oh yeah, and also, uh, you might be wondering where to turn in the quest. I'm gonna check the light bulb really quick. Yeah, it's not here. This is very important. So to turn in the quest, it's this map right here. Valley of the Antelope 1. Not to be confused with the Colossus. It's just up into the right of that. In Valley of the Antelope 1, there's this odd looking tree stump thing, and there's a hidden street inside of it. This is where you turn in the quest. It's important to note that. There! Fourth job. Put on the Master Adventurer title. Okay! So, which of these skills we need for Zazakam? I bet it's these three up here at the top. Angel Ray can hit six targets and restores my health while attacking. This is like my bossing skill. I'm gonna put this on shift weirdly because I'm only gonna use it on Zakan. Big Bang hits 10 targets. It shouldn't do quite as much damage. Wait a second. 80% seven times. That's less than 700% damage, but 300% four times is 1200% damage. This just outright does more damage than Angel Ray. Uh, Angel Ray scales better later, but Big Bang is going to be like my main damage source and it will replace Shining Ray. And then Genesis is a fun one. Love Genesis. It's the map wide attack, 12 attacks on 15 targets. Any player that used to play, like, way, way, way back when, they would recognize Genesis as, like, one of the only map-wide attacks in the game. Big Bang can be used while jumping. And Big Bang has this really nice hitbox that hits below you. Not sure what that's about, but, like, fourth job Bishop? It's actually kind of nice. Also, Big Bang puts a debuff on enemies that lowers their defense. Oh wait, there's a secret base MVP? There we go. Now, register. Will you enter this map into your teleport list? Secret base. There. It won't save across characters, sadly. Uh, that is sad. But now I've got the MVP. The two times coupon, the gold potion. Now I just need to go receive the rune that I saw over here. There's a rune of might. Really quickly, I'm gonna level up. Q for easy Zakan. Save an offering for a normal Zakan. Leave the party, create my own party. I should have done that before I came in this room. And all my buffs are active. Um, I'm just gonna throw some points around here. And infinity. Now I try not to die. Go 
gosh, I'm so bright. I'm gonna see if I can holy magic shell to cover this big like map wide attack. It did not work. It went right through my shell. Unfortunate. Pet dragon, attack! Yeah, get him. Yeah! That went smoothly, I guess. I don't know why seeing mage jump attack feels funny. It sure feels funny. Okay, so I'm pretty sure regular bless and advanced bless do not stack. Uh, arcane aim, nor defense has some sort of stacking mechanic to it. Buff mastery gives flat attack. Bahamut can hit three targets three times. Uh, also puts debuff on target that increases my damage against them. Infinity is a super cool buff. It's hard to explain what it does. When I activate infinity, it gives me a small damage buff. But the damage buff it gives me continues growing throughout the duration of the skill. Which is important because Bishop has a skill called Buff Mastery which increases buff duration by up to 50% I think is max. And there are other ways to increase buff duration in the game. So if you get a lot of buff duration on Bishop and then you activate infinity, the longer infinity goes for, the more it increases your damage by. Up until the last second of infinity where like you have so much damage and then it turns off and it feels bad and it feels like you get withdrawals. It's, it's funny. But I think I'm gonna max advanced bless. Maybe I'll max arcane aim since I'm probably not one-shotting stuff. Then probably buff mastery. Okay. Genesis. It holds a special place, a special place in one's heart. Slayer? Slayer of Hiatos? I love just seeing that moment on that guy's face as he just like, he just like dropped down, just like, like superhero landing, slashed a bunch of mobs, and then saw somebody was here and was just like, oh, sorry. It's a fast 120, but then this was over two sessions. I did Luminous in three hours, whereas this one took almost five hours. Also, uh, Resurrection. Very pretty looking skill. If you have a dead party member, revive them on the spot. I'm telling you, bishops are underappreciated. We need more love for bishops in the community, honestly. So, let us finish off this character. But first, 
I need to check my legion. We now have 2,000 total legion, which means raise my legion rank. Claps enthusiastically. There we go. We can now see the outer grid. It's our first glimpse into the outer grid. And unfortunately, we have a lot of uh, intelligence legions along the side here. I guess the best thing to do for now is probably just take this bishop and put it here on crit damage for the sole purpose of being able to start this raid. Let's hit the start raid button. And I'll just poke this dragon's toes and then retreat. Sell a few of these equips. Start opening these bags, which it looks like I don't have that many bags. But I have a few meso bags. Just enough for a character slot. <laughs> okay, so wait, free market's right here. Goodbye, useless equips. This is like the fifth or sixth character in a row where I thought we might need familiars for mana regen, and we just didn't. Now we can go to Henesis. Character <laughs> slot expansion. All the blue familiars back in the storage. Rather than putting money in, I think I'm gonna take seven million out and go buy another character slot expansion since I've got a lot of bishops ahead of me. <laughs> Army of one power monger. Oh wait, the power monger metal is actually pretty good. Yeah, three to all stats, two attack. I can actually start picking up this metal on my new characters. So I believe this character is done. So now that's level 120. We have level two of empirical knowledge, but Max is out at level six. And for that, we need two other explorer mages. Oh, it pains me to say this. <laughs> we come back with another bishop. <laughs> and it won't even be the last bishop. There are more dark days ahead of us, friends. <laughs>